Hey guys, did you know that only dead things drift downstream? When we talk about your heart, where is it going? Is it moving closer to Jesus and your best version, or is it slowly fading, slowly drifting downstream with the rest of the dead things? Today we offer three ways to test your heart to see which way you're headed. Men in the Arena Army. I salute you. Hey, guys, thanks for listening to this episode of the Man in the Arena podcast. This is Equipping Men in 10. I'm Jim Ramos, your host and guide to your best version, living in that stress bubble of life and beyond. So, guys, I want to tell you a story. Several years ago, uh, I went to the doctor for an annual checkup. So I'd been coffeeed up all day. It was in the afternoon. I'd been in meetings. Uh, they took my blood pressure. It was 200 over 110. They almost called the ambulance. They told me to go lay down. They were freaking out. I was freaking out. I'd been on blood pressure meds off and on, but I had went off them because my blood pressure stabilized. But at this point, obviously, I was in trouble. So they ended up putting me on a regimen of tests and meds. I ended up with resistant hypertension, actually from a football injury in college where the only way I could play my senior year was to get on 2,400 milligrams of ibuprofen for three and a half months, and that has damaged the kidneys, creating this thing called resistant hypertension. So it's now stabilized and under control, but my doctor wanted to have my heart checked just to see if my heart had been damaged by the uh, extended period of hypertension. So I went in for the first test and I got on the treadmill and after about two minutes, the little gal uh, who my nurse said, oh, you have very bad test. You never pass the test. And I said, oh man, that's great. So I failed the first stress test. So because I failed the first stress test, they wanted me to take a nuclear stress test. Now, I don't know what nuclear means, but it can't be a good thing. So I, I got strapped up to this machine. I mean, I had... I had things stuck everywhere on me. I had four people, three people in the room. I got on a treadmill and I started going. They said I went longer than anybody had ever gone before except for a 30-year-old firefighter. At the time, I was in my 50s. About a week later, I got a call from the doctor and he said, well, you failed the test. He said, in fact, you'll never pass a heart stress test. He said, your heart is, well, hmm, different. But you will have a long and healthy life. You're just be, you just beat to a different rhythm. So I thought, okay, that's a good thing. But it got me thinking as I prepared today's uh, uh, equipping episode for you guys. How is your heart? I mean, does your heart pass the test? You know, as followers of Jesus, we should be growing closer to Jesus. So, so I want to give you three ways to test your heart right now. So as you're driving to work in the next five or six or seven minutes, think about this, you know, do you pass the test? So I'm going to give you three H's that stand for heart, three H's to help you test your heart. The first one is this holiness. In other words, do you have nothing to hide? You know, in Luke 11, 36, Jesus said, if you are filled with light, with no dark corners, then your whole life will be radiant as though a floodlight were filling you with light. Another translation says, if you are filled with light, with no unswept corners. So the question, guys, is are you living a life of Christian holiness? Are you living a life that to the best of your ability, you have no secrets, you have no unswept corners, you have no dark areas of your life. In other words, you have no secrets. So that's the first thing. Are you living a life of Christian H, holiness? Second is this, humility. So number one is holiness, having nothing to hide. Humility is having nothing to prove. You know, do you get around your buddies? I call it the redneck uh, pissing contest, you, you know, or, or the you get around the dad circle, you know, and all these guys just instantly start bragging. They start uh, flexing, so to speak. They start positioning themselves, trying to one up. They start name dropping. You know, are you that guy as well, or do you have nothing 
to prove. You are a man of humility. You know, Philippians 2, 3 says this, do nothing from selfish ambition or vain conceit, but with humility, consider others as better than yourselves. Do not merely look out to the your own interests, but also for the interests of others and have this attitude in you that was in Christ Jesus. That's verse five. You know, C.S. Lewis once said, and I love to quote this, he said, Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it is thinking of yourself less. So when you get around people, are you thinking more about impressing those people or elevating those people? The third heart test that starts with an H is H. Are you H, number three, hungry? Now, when I say hungry, I mean this. Do you have nothing to fear? You know, we live in a world where people are afraid of a lot of things. I was just on a bear hunt with my middle son, and we were talking about how fear hinders us from going deep into the canyons, and fear hinders us from walking uh, at night uh, when, uh, you know what I mean, under, under only your headlamp. You know, fear is something that we don't like to talk about as men, which is why I wrote my book, Guts and Manhood. You know, fear is this thing, but fear is overridden. If you are hungry enough, you know, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 6, blessed are you who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for you will be satisfied. Uh, also in, Ma- in Psalm 42, 1, it says, as the deer pants for streams of living water, so my soul longs for you, my God. And you know, it's interesting when you are hungry enough, there is no fear. You will go out after it. And so my questions today, guys, are as you test your heart, are you a man living in Christian holiness? Are you a man living in Christian humility? And are you a man who hungers for God so powerfully that your fear subsides? Hey, guys, if you like this podcast episode today, text this link to one of your buddies, get your buddy involved in our uh, podcast, involved in our ministry. Man, we'd really be grateful for that. Until next time, feel the wet sand on the arena floor. Hear the deafening roar of the crowd. Taste the sweetness of victory. Smell the stench of battle. Get in the game. Get dirty. Grind it out. And be a man.